to welcome you this morning to the 8th edition of the Foodie Fanatic with the Farmers. Good morning, Lori. Good morning. I'm Lori Magistro, and I am the Healthy Foodie Fanatic, and I'm here with the farmers at the Kootenai County Farmers Market. Um, it's a little breezy, but, you know, that doesn't bother us. Sometimes we have cold, sometimes we have wind, sometimes, you know, we don't know what we're going to have. But what we know we do have is great product and great people. I've been around talking to all my friends here this morning. I've had to use some willpower not to test before I got to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you with food in my mouth. But I want to take you in and let's go see some great stuff. Well, I'm standing here talking to Retta and Billy with RTR Angus Farms and we've been talking for a bit already and I've learned a tremendous amount and I kind of want to share with you some of the fascinating things um, that they've learned over the two decades of producing Angus beef. So tell me um, initially how it all began. How did, what got you into the, the business of, of raising Angus beef? Well we started off with the idea that we were concerned about the food quality and, and our health with the meats and the products that we were getting out of the store. We decided to start raising our own beef and the kids got involved with 4-H and that kind of bloomed into the neighbors wanting some of the meat and we grew from that. Mm -hmm. And then we started marketing the meat uh, retail and join the farmers market here. We've been here for eight years. Okay, eight years. Eight years at this market. And we sell out of our house and we're opening a store in Clarkport that we'll be selling out of. So that's just short of how we got started in, you know, with the animals. Well, now, when you and I were talking earlier, you were talking to me about how specific the process is. Right. And, and um, what I was fascinated with was the fact that you can pick and choose and create a type of product. Correct. And so talk to me a little bit about that. Well, what we do is we select genetic qualities in animals to produce a consistent carcass that will be flavorful and yet tender and something we can count on that will be consistent throughout our animal herd. Mm -hmm. And what we've done is used artificial insemination and we handpick our own bulls that we use once in a while. But it's mostly artificial insemination for your carcass qualities of marbling, tenderness, uh, growth. All the qualities that, that really that. people look at when they're when they're choosing their beef. Correct. Now, Billy told me something that blew my mind. Uh, $200,000 it could cost you for one bull, correct? Correct. Isn't that mind-blowing? $200,000 for one bull, but... Through artificial we'll, insemination, we can get that same bull for $50. That's amazing. Yeah. That is completely amazing. Now, it's uh, the other thing that I've learned from talking to you um, that a lot of people probably don't realize is uh, the length of time, the investment not just the monetary investment but the time that you invest in in just producing one one animal mm -hmm. is that right talk to tell, yeah. talk about that a little bit will you well you take a cow and she becomes pregnant and it takes nine months then that calf gets on the ground and you have to care for them and you're 18 months minimum mm -hmm. and then through the processing stage you're another month to a month and a half by the time your carcass is cured in a package bringing it to the consumer so it's not like uh, some meat products that you can produce in just a couple months right and so it's a time-consuming uh, process definitely go through. definitely well, sounds like it that's with the mature cow if you start off with a heifer then you've got to wait till she's 13 months old mm -hmm. get her bred Nine months later, she has her calf. Eighteen months later, you get your first calf or first animal that's able to be processed out of her. Yeah, and if something happens in in between, you're just you're out. You're out of luck. You that, lose you know, that's, all that loss. The other thing that I find fascinating that we talked about um, was the processing, and you're very particular 
about mm -hmm. how you choose to process Correct. Um, because it can very easily you go you to all these efforts to make sure they're hormone free and they're organic and uh, you, you jump through all these hoops to to produce quality product so you have to then continue to follow through to the finishing processing to make sure that what you started with is what you end up with. Yes, we're, that was one of the sticklers that we first started with that we could not follow our animals completely through the chain of events in which you take it in, it's processed the way you want it processed and then delivered to the customer. So we looked at several different plants and we finally uh, discovered a small Mennonite family plant in Plains, Montana. Mm -hmm. Very, very clean. They do what we want them to do in handling our meat and caring for it in a, in a clean way in which we feel comfortable with. We feel confident. Confident in your product that, that once they're done processing, you've got confidence that yeah. it is what you want it to be. Correct. And you can stand behind it with confidence and say, you know, yes, this is the kind of product we want to put out. They take and put our carcass on the processing table. They process our carcass alone. They grind our meat by itself. There's no contamination of any other product. Mm -hmm. We're just really, really happy with these people. Mm -hmm. they're, they're just great. So you're for. fortunate to find them. I Very you. fortunate. Very yeah. Fortunate. And do they process uh, other product for other people? Yes. I mean, I realize they do yes. yours separately, which is yes. the appeal oh. for you, obviously. Mm -hmm. That's the necessity. But do they, do they yes. process others as well? Yeah, they process for a lot of people. Yeah. They do wild game. They do buffalo. So I guess one of the things that we were really concerned about in presenting our product is that ask yourself, where does your product come from? Who handled your product? How was your product handled? Can you feel assured that the product you receive is a quality product that's been handled and cared for properly? I mean, that's one of the things we can do as a small business person, is mm -hmm. we can provide that to you. Mm -hmm. And we, we feel good about that. That's good. Well, that's probably why you've been in business doing this so long. Yeah. You know, you've, yeah. you've, you've dedicated yourself to a certain standard and a certain product, and you stand behind it. And mm -hmm. I think that um, there's a good portion of our society that appreciates that and, yeah. and wants that. You know, it's a, you know, it's kind of like um, organic produce, you know, right. Same, right. same thing. You want to know mm -hmm. what has been on your food or around your food and, and how and, it's been handled. Exactly. Exactly. Well, it's been a pleasure and I've just learned a tremendous amount. I, thank you so much for sharing all your information well, with you're us welcome. today. You're welcome. Hi there, I'm here with the tomato lady. I got her, I got her. She's probably one of the busiest vendors here, farmers, uh, here at the Kootenai County Farmers Market. And I've tried so many times to get her, but she does such a healthy business that I didn't want to interfere. But good morning, good welcome. Morning, good Thank morning. you for giving me your time. Oh, I'm happy to. Well, I want to know how long you have um, been growing all the, uh, you, flowers, tomatoes, I mean, where does it end and how did you get started? That's a lot of questions. <laughs> oh, well, about 15 years ago, um, I was just having a big garden and got kind of carried away, had a lot of stuff, came to the farmer's market. You thought, well, I need to unload some of this. Yeah, Let's go yeah. to the farmer's market. Right. And then now, it's just grown from there. Now, um, you're up in Hayden. In Hayden. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you start your season uh, with well, you're the tomato lady. Mostly tomato plants. And but you have some stuff. other stuff too, yeah. right? You have some other starters. Oh, lots. We have flowers, lots of flowers. And mm -hmm. we have herbs and uh, all kinds of interesting little things, squash and pumpkins. And so is it a year-round thing for you? It's turning into a year-round yeah. work thing. <laughs> Maybe uh, not what you had planned, but that's uh, what it no, is it's now. it's all right. It's a job. It's a lot better job than an office. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, we. I start. I do ordering in the fall. I order seeds. We mm -hmm. can just a whole month just to figure out what I'm going to have, and then yeah. you know, ordering in little plants and getting everything organized, and um, then we start seeds. The first seeds are in, in January. That sounds like a big job to me. Yeah, it sounds like a big job. Uh -huh. yeah. So you you start in January um, because by the time the farmers market starts in mid May, 
it, your stands are full. Oh yeah, you have to be full. Well, I think it's fantastic, and I hope that you'll come see the Tomato Lady and enjoy in the, the wonderful corner. In the southwest, she's yeah, always in the same spot. I don't know, Tomato Lady. <laughs> I hope you'll come see her and enjoy some of her wonderful, wonderful product that comes from a lot of hard work and dedication.